another important topic that is the landmark trials in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease very important topic for the nephrology residents either in the theory exam or practical exam a practical exam adp ckd if it is the case definitely 100 percent there will be question on the important trans which has been done so far in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease we will uh, see the review of all the trials in short subsequently this might be helpful for you to read in detail about these trials so the important named trials in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease are the crisp trial mayo clinic classes tempo trial halt pkd temp pkd and a few data related to the mayo school not only in adp ckd any landmark trial for any disease if we take always it goes in a sequence what was the treatment how it started is there any prognostic factor or prog uh, diagnostic criteria which has been used or not and how this have been evolved or approved based on which it tries so this is what for any major diseases and with respect to adp autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease also we will categorize the trials into three parts first the trials related to the prognosis trials related to the treatment and the trials related to the newer treatment modality first autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease is so common it is incidence is about one in n thousand people and it is one of the leading cause of ckd this is the fifth most common cause of chronic kidney disease in the world and the 80% associated with the liver cyst and as we all know the gene involved for this is the polycystin 1 which is located in the chromosome 16 if it is polycystin 1 there is a high chance of the patient develop ESRD at a younger age in around the age group of 40 to 50 the patient might manifest as severe disease if it is polycystin 2 it might manifest with the milder disease that ESRD might be around the age of 70 around so the chromosome is at the chromosome 4 so how to identify high risk patient suppose a patient is having ADP CKD at the age of 20 years how we will know that patient might go for a rapid progression or a slow progression that is based on one criteria that I already told the genetics another one is pro PKD score third one is the imaging this is the summary slide of whatever I discussed genetic polycystin 1 poor prognosis 2 better prognosis truncated mutation poor prognosis non truncated better prognosis imaging I will discuss there is another one score called the pro PKD score this uses both clinical and genetic factors to decide the prognosis <coughs> what is this pro PKD score it is based on the clinical data from around 1300 patients what they have assessed is if the patient is having male 6 we have to allot one point if the patient is having young onset hypertension that is less than 35 years score of 2 is being given if the patient develop first urological manifestation before the age of 35 either hematuria cyst infection or flank pain another score of 2 points fourth is based on the genetic data PKD2 0 points, non truncated mutation 2 points, truncated mutation 4 points. So we have to sum out all the three. The highest score is 9. If the patient total score is 9, if the patient score falls between 0 to 3, there is a low risk of progression of this AD PKD. If the score is from 7 to 9, there is a very high risk of progression to the end stage renal disease or the patient might manifest with severe manifestations in the form of liver cyst, IC bleed, any severe complications can develop. This is the pro PKD score. This is one parameter by which we can assess the prognosis of the ADP PCKD. What is the third point? Another one is imaging. How imaging is going to help? The trials, important trial related to is the CRISP trial. CRISP 1 and 2 trials are there. This was published in NEJM. This is a volume progression in polycystic kidney disease. What is the abbreviation of the CRISP? This is Consortium of Radiological Imaging Studies for Polycystic Kidney Disease. This is the abbreviation which was done in 2006. Here, basically, in short, they have taken around 240 uh, patients with ADPCKD. EGFR selected was more than 70. Total kidney volume by MRI was assessed. What was the conclusion from this study? Directly going into the conclusion, 
If the baseline TKV is more than 1500, there's a high chance of progression of this uh, ADPKD into end stage renal disease. This is one important conclusion. Other points you can go through the NEJM article. So, what they have found out based on this study is cyst size increases in parallel with the kidney size. This is first point. Both the kidney size increases together. It is not that ADPKD one kidney size increases, other might be normal. Like this is one of the findings they have found in the study. Third point is which we already discussed in the initial time only. What is in one? There is a high chance of progression and a faster GFR fall. Fourth point is if the total kidney volume increases, the GFR decreases. So this is the conclusion from the CRISP-1 study. So they follow up the followed up the patient for another eight years, then became CRISP-2. So what they have found out here also they have found out almost the same. If the total kidney volume, if the baseline total kidney volume is more than 600 cc, there is a high risk the patient might go into a ESRD state. So, since it is giving some, this total kidney volume is giving some input regarding the prognosis of the patient at a early stage, they have suggested total kidney volume, that is HT TKV is a height adjusted total kidney volume can be used as a prognostic biomarker in this autosomal dominant palsy kidney disease. So what are the conclusion from CRISP-1 and CRISP-2? Trial is that there is correlation between TKV and the GFR. If the T total kidney volume is high, the cyst growth will also be there. If there is a cyst growth, GFR fall will be there. So it correlates with the GFR. Higher the baseline total kidney volume, that is more than 600, there is high risk of progression. So total kidney volume is a biomarker for the ADPCKD progression. So whenever more than 1500 cc, there is a very high risk of developing ESRD or if the baseline more than 600. And one more point in the study is if the rise is more than 100 cc per year, then also the patient high chance of landing in chronic kidney disease. This is the conclusion of CRISP-1 and CRISP-2. Clear? So now we know the total kidney volume is correlating with the GFR or like it correlating with the progression. What the Mayo group have did was they have plotted into graph. This is the graph. Here is the age. Here is the height adjusted total kidney volume. There are three lines have been drawn, four lines basically. And based on them, they have divided the class, class 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E. How they have divided the class? Based on this baseline TKV and the rate of growth. Here it is mentioned 1.5, 3, 4.56 per year. If the cyst growth is less than 1.5, 1.5 to 3, 3 to 4.5, 4.5 to 6, more than 6. So as per this, they have divided the class. What is the use of this? We can uh, like establish the risk of progression to ESRD by this graph also. Basically, that imaging parameter what they have found out from this trial. In a more sophisticated way, the graph was formed. So, a yes, summary when to start treating the patient with ADPKD whenever there is a high risk of progression. How to find out who are having high risk? This classes, class 1C, 1D, 1E, whenever there is a high risk of progression as per the total kidney volume. Whenever there is a family history of ESRD, this is not related to the trial. This is one of the important summary for ADPKD when to start treatment. Whenever the age is less than 55, EGFR more than 25, pro PKD score more than 6, truncating mutation, GFR fall more than 2.5, GFR decline more than 5%, total kidney volume increase more than 5%. These are important parameters, but what we have seen in the Mayo College classification that graph is, classes have been given to ascertain the prognosis of this ADPKD. So, so far we have seen the important two trials related to the prognosis now related to the treatment. As we know, 
ఏడీ గెట్స్ యాంటగోనిస్ట్ వ్యాసోక్రిసిన్ ఒక యాంటగోనిస్ట్ ఆల్ వర్క్ అండ్ హవ్ బిన్ యూజ్డ్ ఇన్ ద ట్రీట్మెంట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ ఏడీ పికేడి దె విల్ సీ వాట్ ఆర్ ద ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ ట్రయల్స్ రిలేటెడ్ టు దట్ ద ఫస్ట్ ట్రయల్ వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు సీ ఇస్ ద టెంపో త్రీ ఇస్ టు ఫోర్ దిస్ ఇస్ టోల్ వ్యాప్టన్ ఇన్ పేషెంట్ విత్ ఆటోసోమల్ డామినెంట్ పాలిసిస్టిక్ కిడ్నీ డిసీజ్ కంప్లీషన్ ఇన్ ఎన్ఈజేఎం దిస్ ఇస్ మల్టీసెంట్రిక్ ట్రయల్ డన్ ఇన్ వన్ ట్వంటీ నైన్ సైడ్స్ అక్రాస్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ కంట్రీస్ ఇట్ ఇస్ మెన్షన్ ఓవర్ ద మ్యాప్ ఓవర్ హియర్ so summary of the inclusion criteria who were included eeg fr important in practical they might ask what are all the eeg fr cut off for tempo 3 is to 4 trial or even the crisp trial they might ask the eeg fr cut off for this group is more than 16 age 18 to 50 years look at the age because one more trial comes where the age group is higher total kidney volume more than 750 ml were included in the tempo 3 is to 4 so three year randomized controlled trial multi central trial 1400 patients were included first of the important inclusion criteria i have mentioned over there so what was the primary outcome it is the annual rate of change of kidney volume so secondary parameter outcome you can see over here the dose of the told waptan the used is 30 to 90 30 or 60 as per the patient egfr the dose been modified overall you can remember it is 30 to 90 mg so what is the conclusion from the tempo 3 is to 4 i have mentioned only the summary who were included what was the baseline uh, inclusion criteria and how much was the follow up i have mentioned addition of tolvaptan to the adpkd patient slows the increase in cyst volume and total kidney volume it slows the dfr decrease it reduces the flank pain it reduces the albuminuria but out of 5% of the study population developed liver toxicity and one more finding they also found was higher the tkv rapid is the progression this is with respect to tempo 3 is to 4 so after the third year they decided to expand the study for a longer period of follow up then it became tempo 4 is to 4 look at the total number here yearly treated delayed treated so here also the primary end point is the change in total kidney volume second end point not important just uh, remember the summary of this trial what they have found was this can be better shown in a graph this is the tempo 3 is to 4 where told we have turned reduces the rate of cyst growth here is the placebo like at the end of the tempo 3 is to 4 the for the placebo group also they added told we have turned this group were early treated with the tolvaptan this group was late treated what they have found out was even if you start tolvaptan at a later stage then also it is reno protective this is what they have concluded and this theory they have mentioned what might be the reason for the late benefit early benefit why there is no much benefit in the early group something like that but the conclusion is that even if you add tolvaptan at a later stage of the disease it is beneficial that is concluded from the tempo 4 is to 4 trial so this are the graph they have shown in ckd stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 this is what they have shown told waptan addition in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease is very helpful this graph and the article you can go through the site the entire article is there in the website and is am this is also the summary of the tempo 3 is to 4 and tempo 4 is to 4 in both the trial the safety profile of told waptan was good and almost similar the ea egfr like the reduction in gfr is slowed by told waptan that was proven in tempo 3 is to 4 and it was maintained in the long period of time also this is what the overall summary of this so since i told in the inclusion criteria the age group up to 18 to 50 years was included what about the old patient suppose if the patient is more than 50 years what is the trial that is the, the trial is called as the reprise trial which is the replicating evidence of preserved renal function of tolvaptan in adpckd that is the reprise trial so here the entry criteria summary slide this also multicentric trial 
8 into 55 years more than EGFR of 25 or up to 65 years GFR of 25 to 44 who were not previously treated with 12 apton were included in this trial. Again, they have shown the rate of EGFR fall is reduced with respect to the 12 apton group. And after this important two trial, that is tempo 3 is to 4 and 4 is to 4 and reprise trial, FDA approved 12 apton for use in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease in 2018 April. This will be the more another important point that an FDA resident should be aware of when the 12 apton is was approved for the CDPKD based on the 12, uh, tempo 3 is to 4 and 4 is to 4 because it slowed the GFR drop and reduces the cyst growth also whether you start it early or start it late this is the very important point from this slide so there was a another data mayo college data they have followed out the patient for up to 11 years and they have showed that the reduction in gfr in the total wapton group is lower than in the placebo group this is a simple graph just to show even if you start the total wapton at the egfr of 30 before reaching the end stage renal disease around 2.3 years gap is there between placebo and total wapton group suppose if the egfr is 60 when you start total wapton up to 6.8 years is uh, extra added benefit in the total wapton group before uh, the patient reaches the end stage renal disease so this was the conclusion from the myo school data that even if we start told webton at the egfr of 30 the person gains 2.3 years extra before reaching the end stage renal disease that is egfr of less than 13. so we have seen the trials related to the prognosis trials related to the treatment now one important trial related to the blood pressure now the question comes in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease these patients are prone for hypertension what is the bp target and which drug to use whether ac inhibitor arb to be uh, used alone or to be combined and what is the bp target the trial related to that is the halt pkd study in this there are two study groups study group a and study group b in study group A, what they have divided? One group where the BP was set at 120 over 70 to 130 over 80. Another group, a lower BP target was kept. Here in the study group B, ACE or ACE plus ARB. Rather than going into the inclusion criteria and all, going directly into the summary, what they have told is, in younger patient, younger age group, a strict BP control might be beneficial. But in general, uh, there is no much difference between the standard and low BP if you take a overall age group. And out of this ACE, ARB combined or only ACE or ARB, what they have told was either ACE inhibitor or ARB. No need to combine it. If we combine it, there is high chance of complication. So this is the conclusion. So study A, 548 participants, I have discussed this, what is the baseline summary of these two trials. They have written the two parameters, first for PP target, second for drugs. So that is about HALT PKD trial. Now one drug, one trial related to the newer, newer treatment for ADPKD. It is not the newer drug, metformin, now it is being studied in treatment of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease because of its mechanism of stopping the multiple kinase pathway. The regarding the pathophysiology and the treatment parameters for ADPKD, we will see in a separate video. Here, regarding, uh, I will discuss only the trial related to the metformin. The trial is tame PKD trial. Here it is a randomized control trial of metformin in polycystic kidney disease. It is a phase 2 trial where they have included 97 patients they have alerted to metformin and placebo they just did the tolerability what they have since the patient of adpkd are more prone for liver cyst they have assessed how the patient tolerated the metformin they have found that metformin in adult patient with adpkd is safe and well tolerated regarding the efficacy and the long-term benefit further studies are ongoing
so this temp pkd is just a tolerability study they have told that temp pkd in adp ckd metformin is well tolerated so this is the conclusion EGFR of 50 is safe well tolerated the summary is it is just well tolerated so so far we have seen these important trials crisp 1 and crisp 2 is related to the progression imaging mayo clinic school data just the tkv have been put it into graph tempo 3 tempo 4 tempo 3 is to 4 4 is to 4 and reprise trial is related to tolvapten and they have shown tolvapten is beneficial mayo school data even if we start tolvapten at gfr of 30 tolvapten is beneficial halt pkd regarding the bp target and the combination whether can be used or not same pkd they have mentioned metformin is very helpful sorry not very helpful it is tolerated in adpkd patient regarding the long term beneficial ongoing trials are still there results are yet to out so what is the overall summary from chris one and two they have shown that total kidney volume correlated with progression total kidney volume more than 5500 associated with poor prognosis and overall increased risk to esrd if the total kidney volume is more than 600 there is an increased risk of progression this is the overall summary from crisp 1 and crisp 2 the myos clinical classes class 1a to 1e 1c to 1d and 1e there's a high chance of progression or the rapid progression treatment have to be started tempo 3 is to 4 4 is to 4 the price which have shown that 12 after reduces the progression reduces the egfr decline egfr maintain and the time to reach esrd is slowed down even if we start 12 after at egfr of 30 also myo school data the same i have discussed halt pkd low pp is better for younger population only ac or arb not dual is required in adp ckd then pkd metformin well tolerated so these are all the important named landmark trial in autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease one should aware of i hope with this summary you will able to understand these trials in a better way and uh, one by one whatever the trial you want to know in detail now you can go and study in detail